here's the kicker, guys. Um, like I said before, we have a lot of things in this class that get you know, recycled into new and really exciting ways of working with geometry. Um, so take a look at this. I think you'll be really surprised and you're going to think it's the coolest thing ever. If you go under the Surface tab and under the Analysis panel and you click on Deconstruct B-Rep and you plug that surface into it, well, now you have all of your curves, all of your points, all of your surfaces right there readily modifiable, just like yesterday in 3D. I know, mind blown, right? Huh? Can you show that again? Yeah, so you go into Surface and you go into Analysis and then you click on Deconstruct B-Rep, drop it in front of your latest and greatest surface and plug it in. So now you've got all of those faces, all of those edges, and all of the vertices ready to go, ready to be changed into something beautiful and wonderful. All right. So um, what do we do with this? Right? It's kind of something that you probably by now are beginning to understand what to do with it. Um, but you know, maybe it's still alien to you how you use it, right? So we know how to model a pipe and we know how to color some panels and understand patterns across this sequence, I guess you would say. Um, but in this case, we're actually going to start to triangulate. And then from triangulating it, we're going to start to develop geometry within the triangulated cells. Making sense now? Um, so let's take a look at that. I'm going to make this a little bit larger so we have some more extreme geometry to play around with. All right, that's cool. And I'm going to turn off this original surface because I don't need that. Right, so get in the habit of turning off old geometry. Right, you probably don't want to see too many of your old moves in the new geometry because you want to be able to see what you're turning off and turning on with the commands that you're using. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Okay, um, we need to create triangulated surfaces within the 3D cells between these points, right? So the challenge is that, well, now all of these edges are curved. And so do we really want to create, um, do we really want to try and triangulate with those edges? No, we don't. Um, we don't want to triangulate with those edges because they are curved. And if we added in a line from one point to another across these cells, then we would still have two curved surfaces and then it's not planar. Okay, so we need to map relationships of lines to three different points across this grid of vertices. Okay, so that's what we're going to work with. We're going to work with the vertices. Um, and so we're familiar with grabbing particular ones. Um, and we're familiar with kind of dropping a pipe onto any out of a list of, you know, however many we have. But the difference here is that instead of flattening that list and picking any particular one, we want to have our selection be to every single cell. So the thing we're going to do differently is actually easier. We're not going to flatten the list. Right? So flattening the list, what we look at here, we have groups of four lines, or sorry, four points for each of the cells, right? We've got the bottom left, top left, top right, bottom right for each of the squares. Um, <clears throat> so we can grab those points and simply draw a line in between them to create our triangles. And so that kind of just simply looks like this. We're going to go into curve and we're going to create a line. Actually, no, that's the long-winded way. Let's just do a surface. So we're going to go into surface, and we're going to go and do a surface four point. Um, bear in mind that four point surface is actually very similar to the surface four point in Rhino, where you use a four point surface to also make a three pointed triangle. Right. Um, so it's all the same. You you're just only going to use three inputs. Okay, so um, we need to identify which points along those triangles we're going to use. And so how do you grab certain items? 
in a list? Do you recall from yesterday? Uh, you bring down the list thing, right? Yeah. The list thing, the panel <laughs> thing, yeah. It's all, so it's close enough, I guess. Panel, yes. You get the idea. Um, you go into set under list, and you look at list item. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Listen. Wesley was a little bit closer than you, Carl, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so you plug in the vertices into the list, and then you say which out of that group of four items you want, and then you plug it into one of the corners of that triangle. Making sense now? So let's make a slider, and it's going to go from 0 to wherever, start with 1, to 3. If you recall, when there's four points, we start at 0, which means our end number is 3. So that goes into our list item. Our vertices go into the list. And then, um, well, let me pull that back to zero. We'll start with that. And I'm going to pull this out and just kind of show you the whole string here right off the bat. So I know that I'm making triangles across this grid. So I need three of these. I need to say uh, I want a zero. Whoops. I want a zero, I want a one, and I want a two. And then I'm going to plug that into the A, the B, and the C. And you can hide your deconstruct B rep. And there's the panelized relationship, right? The surface that's being mapped into the one side of each of those cells. See here? Vertices into list item, and we choose three different points on that cell, and it creates a surface. So the other thing that we can do if we want to maybe flip the triangles is select the other available point, which would be the opposite side. So if I want to flip the triangle to the other side, I make it three. Or if I switch this to two, or if I switch that to one, that's how you pick which triangle edge you want to actually use, or I should say rather which hypotenuse and direction. Oh, okay. So that's how you change like, the type of triangle? Yep, that's how you change its location along the quadrant of, of that cell. Any questions so far? Yes? Can we group uh, all of these uh, lists or not? Should we? Group them? You mean just group it like this so visually you can, yeah, sure, why not? Um, yeah, you could do that. Or are you asking me to do it because you don't know where it came from? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's from sets, list, and then list. There you go. Good job, Carl. Yeah. So we've got surface analysis for the deconstruct B rep. The list items are coming from sets list, and the surface four point came from surface freeform. Okay. So um, this whole string is one triangle. Okay. If I wanted to separate that into a group, I can then, even though I already grouped some smaller ones, I can group around the whole thing and separate it. And I can call this triangle one. Something like that. Slide that out of the way. T angle. Right, there we go. So that would be triangle one. Eventually, we're going to get into triangle two and morph it into something else. but. You get the idea here. So yes, you can group it, um, you know, group and regroup and ungroup and all that other stuff. Um, just another kind of tip on grouping. Um, I don't know yet if there's like a workflow function to this, but you can change the way that the groups look by double clicking on them. So if you double click it, it creates a little bubble or it'll go to, you know, rounded edges. I think it's just a visibility thing, whatever you prefer. I don't know that there's a functional difference between the two. Yes? Uh, how do you ungroup again? Ungroup, you select the group, right click it, and go to ungroup. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yep. 
and undo, which I just had to do because I wanted to go back to my group, control Z. So um, heads up to all of you guys, uh, if you're not using hotkeys, use them because hotkeys save you so much time. There's no reason for you to select something, right click it, and then try to look for delete. Just hit the delete button. Or if you want to copy a whole sequence or a part of a sequence like this, um, you can grab, and that's actually what we're going to do next. I'm going to grab these three items and I'm going to control copy, control V to paste it rather than going up to edit, copy, edit, paste. Okay, so get in the habit of doing that. It's very, very useful to you. Um, so I just copied and pasted one line of list item down. So that's significant because I don't have to, for the next triangle, I don't have to do three different list items. All I have to do here is reroute which list items I'm using. So I'm going to slide that up there like this. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. If I change this input, I've got a 0, a 1, and a 2, and I'll make this one 3. Okay, I need to find out which triangle input I want if I'm going to have, you know, my third input uh, down there. So when I have, let's see, that was three to start off. Oh, is it, does it go backwards? Oh, here's a, here's a good pro tip, actually, and I want to get this on the same video. So I'm trying to figure out which point is which in the in the triangle, or sorry, in the uh, cell. So there are four points. I don't know which one's which. I could play around with it till I get it right. But if you want to see visually a display of which point is which, it's up here under the display tab. Okay, and you should write this one down too because it'll help you out in so many different ways. Um, so it's called point list. And if you click on point list and you drop it in, it's going to ask you for two things. It says points to display and then the size, right? So it's a text size. Let's just make that a slider for now, 0, 1, and 10. I have no idea what scale I'm on right now, but you probably would know. And so you plug that into the size. Um, but if I want to read those points, I can plug my vertices in and increase the size until I see my numbers. So similarly, if I only wanted to see one cell, one cell's numbers, I can copy that list item up and only plug that in. Oh, sorry, that's only going to give me the number itself. Uh, how do I get the cell? I need. Oh, I need to isolate the face. Sorry, list item. Points. 42. Oh, that needs to be flattened, I think. Which one is it doing? Why is it an error? Oh, right, because that's only reading points. Sorry. There's some other display for that. I forget where that is. So this will only read points. Um, so let's take a look at one of these. And it colorizes them so you can begin to understand, even though it's a little confusing because they're all different, you know, uh, they're all kind of on top of one another. But if you look at, let's say we're looking at this aqua bluish color. Um, we have zero in the bottom left corner. We have one in the top left and then two at the top, and then three at the bottom right. Um, so if I hide this one, I look at what my original numbers are. So it's zero, one, and two. So instead of picking zero, one, and three, which will give me the wrong triangle, I need to pick zero, two, and three. Does that make sense? So I'll replace, I'll keep the zero connection to the A, I'll replace this one with the 2 in B, and I'll keep 3 in C. So when I turn that back on, they'll be complementary. Making sense? It should. All right, so I'll group those together. That's triangle B. So you should have a fully panelized, triangulated surface across that grid system at this point. So you 
doing it filled in all the way? Yep. What was the slider for points, the size one? This up here? Uh, I just made it 0, 1, and 10. And then I slid it, so 0, 6, and 10, you know, because six. each one of these letters right now is 6 feet tall, so my model is really big. Okay. So this is under display and vector. All right, so um, I just inadvertently um, introduced to you another idea that I want you to be aware of before I close the video, and that's the right side of this points node. Okay, the or component. The the right side has this little like, you know, sawtooth on it. That means that that command ends right there. There is no other purpose to that command. It doesn't process the data. It doesn't continue on and give you a list of points. It doesn't produce anything except a visual display. Okay. So just throwing that out there. Any questions? All right.